Welcome back, everyone. This segment is brought to you by De Los Reyes Cigars, the maker of the Saga Golden Age Cigar. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban scenes grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. We're back here with Mr. Will Cooper and Willie Flores from La Hoja Cigars. Welcome, Willie. Hey, how are you, my friend? Good, good. So, Willie, how did uh, how did you get your start uh, in the cigar industry? Oh, God, born into it. <laughs> my uh, my family's been in the uh, growing tobacco and manufacturing cigars since Cuba, since the 1930s. Uh, then my father learned to trade from his father, and you know we we had, used to have a brand in Cuba called uh, Flor de Flores, and it was small, but uh, it, uh, it it was pretty successful there. And then uh, you know the typical Cuban story, 1962, my parents fled Cuba. Uh, I was born here, but my dad invested in a little cigar factory in Miami in the early 60s when there was practically nobody in Miami. Most people were in Tampa, or believe it or not, in Jersey, New York. Uh, with the uh, cigar factories. So, you know, living in Jersey, he would travel on and off to uh, to uh, Miami, come back to Jersey. And, um, I mean, as a kid, I remember my dad rolling cigars on the kitchen table, nice. you know, and bundling, bundling them up and selling them to local stores and stuff like that. But uh, we had a nice following for a lot of years in the Florida area, uh, northeast area, New York, New Jersey. You know, back then, you couldn't really give a cigar away, so it was it was a tough industry. And then uh, came uh, late '80s, and that's when I told my brother, "Let's let's 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 get into back. Let's bring Dad's cigar back in the market." You know, and my you know my family was a little hesitant because you know people weren't really smoking cigars in the late '80s, early '90s. It was hmm. tough. And uh, so we opened up a little shop in Hoboken, New Jersey, in 1989, and we were scared. But uh, I can tell you right now, when 1992 came around. It was an explosion. I mean, Cigar Fictionado just came out. People were coming in asking for cigars and all that. Our cigars took off like crazy. We sold a lot of cigars around the country. We had a lot of counts. Yeah, and, really, uh, why, what, what do you attribute the boom to? Like, what, what caused that boom in cigars? I, I could tell you. I, I think Cigar Fictionado definitely had a, Interesting. A, just a huge, huge mm-hmm. impact. I mean, when, there was never a, a magazine out there, you know, catered just to cigar smokers. You know, we were in the closet with that stuff. And uh, when they started putting certain celebrities on the cover and mm-hmm. the ratings and all that, people were like, wow, a Cohiba, a 94, 95 rating, a Gloria Cabana, what's that? I got to try that. And we had these, all these cigars, besides the Cubans, we had all these in the shop. And people coming in and, you know, just going crazy. <laughs> I mean, you, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we had lines outside, people trying to come in. Wow. It was it was insane back then. But, uh, you know, here we are today, you know. I uh, I opened up a shop here also in, in the Fort Lee, New Jersey, 1993. And the explosion continued to, to about 1998. And, uh, I mean, it's still very good right now. We still have a mini boom going on. And, you know, but we, we've been manufacturing forever. And, you know, six years ago, I partnered up with my friend Carlos Gomez. And we, uh, I came up with the idea, let's come out with a Dominican cigar. You know, in this industry, there's so many Nicaraguan cigars, as, as you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so many with that San Andreas, Nicaraguan, nothing wrong with them. But it's, it's getting overplayed, I think. And I, I wanted to come out with a Dominican cigar that was full body. That reminded people that old those old Cuban cigars from the day where, you know, you light it up, you get that blast. And a lot of people didn't think you could do it with Dominican. A lot of people think, you know, when they think Dominican, they think Ashton or Macanudo. And it's such a misconception, you know, when they look at Opus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dominican tobacco can certainly be a lot more versatile than people think. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's the closest to Cuban. I, I say 
I mean, I smoke everything. I carry everything in my shop. And we're in a, you know, we're in a couple hundred shops right now in the country, our cigars. And uh, everybody gets, they're doing really well at the shops. They have a lot of repeat people, especially the guy who likes that medium plus mm. and the flavor that doesn't quit, you know. And that's what we're doing. I believe it's... Uh, yeah, were you, were you concerned about coming out with a cigar that was a little more bold, that it might turn people off, as the, the trend lately has been towards more of the Connecticut's and medium kind of bodied cigars? Were you, could you be kind of nervous about coming out with a bolder cigar? No, not at all. I, uh, I I see it on both sides of the fences here, you know, retail wise and manufacturing wise. I I I think uh, I think the consumers more in that medium. You see, a lot of a lot of consumers don't realize, you know, they'll, they'll come in here and say I like something smooth, mild, you know. Okay, okay, and then I I I, I test them. I'll give them like a Padron anniversary, or I'll show them one of our cigars, and they go, Wow, that was delicious. That was really rich and smooth. Hey, a lot of them confuse, I think, uh, that mildness with, with smooth flavor, you know. And mm-hmm. and I know you're saying there's cigars out there that, that are a big blast of strength. We're not like that. We're, we we ferment and cure our tobaccos for a long time. We take all that harshness and bitterness out of the, the cigar. You don't lose that flavor. You don't lose that body. I think it just smooths it out a little bit where it comes a thicker, creamier uh, smoke, mm. which is uh, what we have. Uh-huh. So do you have do you have just one uh, particular blend now, or do you have multiple different blends of um, La Jolla? Yeah, no, we have um, we we have three lines technically. Mm-hmm. It's really two lines, but we have a reserve line. One one our classic line is uh, four sizes. Uh, you know, which is a natural. The classic is a natural Ecuadorian Corojo, and which is the filler is primarily Dominican with a little bit of Nicaraguan. Uh, we have a San Andreas Maduro uh, line also. It, it mirrors the uh, classic in sizes. Um, same blend, but with a San Andreas wrapper. And then we have a reserve line, one size only, which is uh, it's an unbelievable cigar. It's an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper with a completely different blend inside. And I just came back from the DR. We're working on a new line for the IPCPR, um, which is going to be an Ecuadorian Alano light wrapper. With a, it's a medium body, mild to medium, just a sweet, creamy flavor. It's an unbelievable. I mean, I was really, really happy the way this came out. So that would be the third official line, and the reserve is just a one size, you know, limited edition type thing, box of twelve. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. So uh, in your classic line, for example, you, you say you want some of those more bold flavors. Uh, are you mixing more of uh, Lajero leaves in there, or like, do you know, what what are your different primaries? Yeah, we in- got a we ha- yeah we have forty five percent of the filler is a Lijero. Wow. We have little viso, mm-hmm. and but the Lijero we use is Cuban Piloto, which is mm-hmm. it's pretty rare tobacco in the DR. It was it's the best tobacco they ever had in the DR. You know, in the 70s is when this thing really was like, it's when it was really discovered, you know, when it took the seeds from Cuba, which is the Criollo seed, brought over to Dominican. And it's a short plant. That's the only drawback in this this mm. uh, tobacco. It's a short plant. It doesn't yield a lot. So it becomes very costly to uh, grow. But it is so intense. This tobacco is just a rich, deep coffee flavor. And, I mean, Davidoff is now starting to grow it again. Uh, Lito Gomez is, is growing it again from LSD. Um, there's a couple of people in the DR that are, uh, re, re, uh, you know, regrowing everything there with, with Cuban Piloto. And all our, that's all we use in our cigars. It, I mean, you, you try it, you'll see. Very nice. unique, very unique yeah. flavor. That's awesome. Will, sorry, yeah, did you have yeah. a, a question? No, it's okay, because the, the, that was my question on the Piloto Cabana I was going to ask, and, and uh, Willie answered it because I noticed all the blends we use in that. So I was kind of wondering what, what drew him to that. So that was you kind of were ahead of me on that. Um, Will, Willie, there was, some, there was some cigars you had that had the florist name on them. Are, have those been discontinued? Have they been rebranded? No, uh, the florist brand, we still manufacture in Miami, the Flo de Flores. Um, that's a cigar that just, I have such a huge following for that in our shops and a few stores around the country. It's not, we, we kind of, you know, the production in Miami is just so costly and not that I could have done a DR, but because of family reasons, I had to kind of separate myself and cause I can't, I couldn't just take that and do it on my own, you know, cause you know, family, the whole family owns it, but it's something we still do. But La Oja is separate from that. 
Um, it's just, you know, in our blood, man, our family, that's, this is all we do. We've always done cigars. We've cultivated, you know, the land to grow tobacco everywhere. And, you know, I can't even wait for the day Cuba opens up where, <laughs> I mean, we still grow tobacco in Cuba, my family. When that, when that happens, God willing, you know, we can start blending with Cuban tobacco, hopefully. It works out that way. You know? That's really cool. Do you have like blends in mind that you would that you would make with Cuban oh, tobacco? Yeah. You oh, already do. You already have Cuban. like the recipe written down, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Cuban wrapper, without a doubt. Mm. Cuban wrapper is the best wrapper. And then I would love to try things with a like a twenty percent Nicaraguan and maybe a thirty percent uh, Dominican. Try it, and of course some Cuban filler in there. Uh, binder, you'd have to experiment, but uh, it would be you know it's going to open up doors to things that we've never seen in the mm. cigar industry. Never. That's the, that's the beauty of this. You know, it's it's unlimited. I think. Do you still do you smoke you know, do you smoke Cuban cigars still today? I I do I do yeah when I get them you know whenever someone brings me a box or something or if I travel yeah absolutely it, with Cuban cigars you got to really pick you can't buy Cuban cigars by brand you got to buy them by how they look and a lot of people don't realize that you know when 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 you get people you know we're looking hey I love Hoya de Monterey that's all I smoke. And you see a box of, let's say, St. Louis Ray next to it, and it's chocolatey. And, and the, the age in the box you see was, was boxed the seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. That's a home run. And as long as they draw well, you know, if that tobacco has been sitting, those cigars have been sitting. Um, and the, the color in these wrappers, some of them, especially the old school ones from the 80s and early 90s, these Cubans had a nice chocolatey wrapper every time, which you don't really see too much anymore. But, uh, yeah, I I I, I think um, that's the problem with, with people who smoke Cuban cigars too. They uh, they stick to a certain brand like Bahique or you know Cohiba or whatever. When there's there's better stuff out there. Mm, that's but, interesting. Yeah, and the consistency is not bad. I mean, Cuban, you know, back I remember back in the early '90s, mid '90s, uh, the whole boom. Cuban cigars were just full of ammonia. Mm. I mean, it was full oh, of the yeah. box. You open up a box, you could smell ammonia through the box. They were just not curing the tobacco. They had no time. The demand was through the roof. Now, ever since Altavis became partners in Cuba, they've really come a long way as far as, uh, you know, the fermenting, the curing, and, and the rolling. Was there, you had a lot of problems with the draw back then. But I, I, I think they're going the right way with cigars. And But I think, I think let me tell you, Dominican and Nicaragua really don't have much to be envious about. They, yeah. they are growing. They're doing some unbelievable stuff. I was just at the Fuente factory there uh, last week, and... I said that with Carlito, we, we talked, we did a tour and everything, and I see things that he's doing that I, he promised me not to tell him, not going to say anything, <laughs> but it is unreal, unreal what's happening and what he's going to be coming out with, you know? It's, do you think, it's um, with Dominican back. Do you think someday, <laughs> and I'm asking because you, you seem closer um, than certainly like myself, for example, uh, to the situation, do you think someday that the embargo will be lifted? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen now, though, with all this mm-hmm. talk, Obama and all that, because cast the, the Cuban government doesn't want the embargo lifted right now. It's it's not in their best interest. Really? You know, they, That's interesting. They, yeah, they don't. They're not going to. There's no way the Cuban government benefits except for money that the U.S. will spend there and will go into the military. Other than that, the Castro's are billionaires, mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 the government does not want the American media in Cuba. Mm-hmm. They don't want the world to see what's really going on. Like, mm-hmm. With no That's human rights, no, no civil liberties at all. And, you know, and then they'll be disgraced and forced into capitalism, which is they do not want. <laughs> yeah. It, but, it, and it, it yeah, threatens it, their empire, right? Yeah, That's what it, it sounds does. Like. And yeah. the cash is already making a lot of demands with Obama. We want this, we want that. We want, because they don't want it lifted. They're making it, they're making it hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's, so, that's an interesting uh, perspective. Yeah, it's the story of Cuba. You can't do business with the Castros. <laughs> they could open it. I mean, I wish they would open it up. I really do. Listen, I'm Cuban. My parents, you know, are are against it. But I would love to see it lifted just so the world can see that. Look, here we are, five years later, and nothing's changed there. You know, mm. it wasn't us. It was never us. It was, it's that government. It's that style of government. It doesn't work. Right. You know, the revolution mentality, and that's it. But I think uh, I think after the cash was d- done, somebody in the government has to have some common sense. Say, listen, enough is enough. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, you need some type of revolt or something. But, you know, Cuba it's an island, and they know everything that comes in, everything that goes out. Right, right. You know, they have pure control, sure. man. That's interesting. But, um, yeah, 
so uh will you've owned a shop for a really long time it sounds like um is yeah, your shop yeah. always been in in new jersey yeah mm-hmm. we've uh we've had stores in manhattan we've had stores in northern new york uh but we've had we had four shops in jersey you know mm. right awesome now. so like right now what what are some of your best selling cigars in the store uh our brain la Oja is selling like crazy here of course you know we really get behind it because our product yeah but absolutely. we carry everything everything and uh Besides that, Padron is probably my biggest. Mm-hmm. Davidoff, I sell a lot of Davidoff here. And uh, Fuente products, you know, mm-hmm. all, all that combined. Those are all good. has do really well here, mm. you know. Yeah, that, those are probably our biggest sellers. What, what's your take yep. on kind of the, you know, you mentioned before that we're kind of in like a mini boom right now. Is, is that due to some of the explosion of the boutique uh, type of cigars, do you think? Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with it, but I, I think it's just uh, the fact that it, it's a new generation now. You know, in the 90s, you had a really big boom, and those kids that were, you know, five, six, seven years old in the 90s are now in their 20s, and they're really getting into it, you know, and, they, and, and they're growing up now in an, in an era where there's so many brands where boutiques are taking over a lot. And, um, when you know, when we opened our shop, if you had six brands, anybody even knew, it was a lot. We had Macanudo, Chubman, Romeo, Don Diego. These were the big brands. And then Albo came out. Uh, and I was like, whoa, that's expensive. You know, it's a $6 cigar. You know, that was like an outrageous thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then people started noticing Gloria Cabana because the Cigar Ficcionano. People started noticing you know, some of the other brands started coming out, you know. Uh, I forget half of them now. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's right now it's an era where there's so much to choose from. I've never seen so many good quality cigars in this industry like there is today. It's incredible. It's what's happening now. Mm. Really, really is. I mean, look at the Oliva family. They're putting out a great product. <laughs> Fuente always does. La Flor Dominicana does. Another cigar that's very underrated, the Paul Garmerian. A lot of people don't even know about Oh, we talk a lot yeah, about that. Yeah, we those. talk a lot about that. There's a local retailer here who's one of our sponsors, Mr. J. Savannah Smoke Shop. Uh, and uh-huh. they've been a Paul Camarion account for a long time. And when yeah, I first yeah. started shopping there, um, yeah. you know, they had just had a fantastic selection. I was like, this is like, yeah, you know, yeah, I've been, where did this come from? Yeah. Oh, my God, these cigars are I great. I know. Yeah, it's uh, Hanky Kemmler gets behind us. You know, he is the one that does it with Paul Camarion. I've been carrying PG since we've been in business. <laughs> mm. He started, I think, in 90 or 91. That's, yeah, he did, that's when yeah. we started carrying it. And uh, I tell you, that Symphony 20 is amazing. And remember, they're made in the uh, Davidoff factory, too. You know, his own thing, his own blend, everything. Mm-hmm. You know, Kelman's the one who does it for him. But it, great, great stuff. Nice, nice stuff. And, uh, you know, there's brands like that that are a lot of people don't know. I and mean, there's still so many people don't even know that are so good. <laughs> but yeah. how much can a store carry, you know? <laughs> right. That's the problem. So how, yeah. how, do you, how do you steer someone who uh, maybe doesn't know which cigar to choose that comes into your shop? Well, I, I, first thing I ask them, well, have you had a cigar before? If they say, yeah. Or even if they say no, I go, do you, have you tried something mild that you felt was mild? Do you, you, have you tried medium or tried full? Are you going to have it, first of all, you know, after lunch, after dinner, or first cigar of the day, you know, in the morning? You know, and if, they're, if, they've, if, they've, if they've smoked a lot of cigars before, I don't mind showing them something that's, you know, medium plus in body. If they haven't, you know, I smoke many, and it's if they're gonna have it after dinner, I'll show them something medium body. Uh, if it's something, you know, during the day type thing, definitely something mild. You know, like like a David off, like a PG. Um, there's so many. I don't know if you've had the the Cremois. Oh, Brian Chinook. Brian Chinook. Yeah. 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 Really, yes, really yes. nice cigar. We we carry their stuff. Uh, that's a nice mild cigar. It's got a lot of flavor. The Cabernet Juan. By uh, that's why it's another nice mild cigar. There's so much right now, it really is, and that's why we're coming out with a, another line now, which to cater to that customer that likes something mild to medium, but doesn't lose flavor. A lot of companies do a cigar that's mild. I don't want to say names, but they just lack flavor, man. They mm-hmm. really do. You wait and wait, and it just never gets going, you know. Um, and we'll something that doesn't quit on you, that continues with that. Sweet aroma, you know, creamy sweet aroma, which is what we're doing. That seems yeah, to be the trend right now, and I, I think it, you know, I attribute a lot to a lot of the the, the media around cigars and what you can just go read about in in terms of cigars mm-hmm. and how educated the tobacconists are in local brick and mortars about cigars. 
that I think the consumer is really gravitating towards the, the style of cigar of wanting that kind of medium body to a full flavored style cigar. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing too. You're right. And, uh, like we were talking about PG before, when when he first came out, his he just had the classic line, the robusto, the I mean, not even the robusto, the connoisseur, yeah. the Bellicoso. They were beautiful, mild, medium, but it had character, had flavor. Then in the last few years, he's been putting a lot bolder stuff out there. He has, yeah. You know, he came out with that that Symphony Twenty, which a lot of that tobacco is from the Yamasa region in the DR, uh, same oh. as the Davidoff uh, Puro de Oro. That's a line that, that that's that region with grows very rich tobacco. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of magnesium in that that soil, and uh, just I mean, the ashtrams are very white, but it's a really intense cigar. Really, I mean, a lot of companies are doing. It. Even Davidoff. Remember years ago, Davidoff was just known for being mild, mild cigars. Yeah, mild, yeah. Mild to make, now they have the Nicaraguan, Pure Oro, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, in 2000, they came out with the Millennium, which was but a lot Yamasa bolder. Region. Yeah, and then the Puro de Oro, which was... And their, the art, their old... art edition is a lot bolder of a cigar as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I find that for sure. Mm. And, you know, That's a lot of companies are doing that. They're, they're, they're carrying, they're representing everything now, you know, mild, the medium, full. You know, years ago, in the, like 80s, 90s, these companies would, this is what they made, this is what it is. Mac and Noodle, this is it, all mild. Don Diego, this is it, all mild. You know, Monte Cristo was the same thing. Now, you don't see that. I mean, mm. you see... Companies now have the black, the this, the that, strong, the fuerte. You know, they're all doing that now. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the consumer is is more well educated as well, and I think that. Yeah, I think I think more. It seems to me like more people are taking up cigar smoking and doing it at different times of the day in different time in different uh, situations. Like you said, when someone comes in and asks for a cigar, and you, you know, one of the questions you ask is, "Well, when are you going to smoke it?" Right? Because you don't want to smoke something Absolutely. that's really spicy and heavy first thing in the morning. You kind of want to balance it out. And I think now we've got such a selection of different cigars yeah. for different kinds of situations, which I think is great. Oh yeah, size wise, flavor wise, strength wise, you're right. Yeah. Now, do you sell more? Speaking of size wise, do you sell more sixty rings, or do you smell, sell more like uh, Lanceros or Laundry size cigars? Well, in my shop, we do more of that fifty two ring, fifty, mm-hmm. fifty two, fifty four is the big sellers. Um, you know, now nationally with our brand, I tell you, uh, we do quite well with the sixties, but I still think we do much better with a. With, we have one that's called the number nine, which is a five and a half by 56 the soft box press mm-hmm. actually looks slimmer than it is because of the press but mm. that's probably our biggest seller and mm. um that toro size i think is the big seller on the country like that that six by 52 yeah size yeah. that seems to be the most popular size still you know a lot of these companies went crazy with the 70 rings 80 rings even oh yeah a little, too much i think but you know, the 60 today is the Robusto back then when we had, you know, it's true. the 70s. That's what it is it now. It is, yeah, no, you're totally right. Uh, so <laughs> now in your own line, the La Hoja cigars, do you have a smaller ring gauge uh, in that line as well? The smallest ring gauge we have is the uh, the, the, 50, the 52 ring mm-hmm. in the Robusto. Yeah, we do a 52. We have the, the 56, 54, and the 60. Uh, we are working with a Lancero right now. Nice. We're thinking about adding it. Uh, it's, I, I just smoked them down there in the DR, and man, <laughs> that cigar delivered more body and flavor than the 60 ring does. Mm. I, I just couldn't believe it. And um, so it's something we're going to try first in our shops to see what kind of reaction we get. If we see it's something, you know, then we'll, we'll really uh, blast it, you know, pretty nationally. But um, I don't know if you guys you know, go or ever gone to the trade show. If you go, stop by our booth, and you'll see uh, what we're doing. With the new stuff coming out, we're introducing it there. Beautiful presentation, great, great smokes. You know, you get to uh, try it. I'll have some of my you like. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we'll awesome. be there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm going to definitely be there. Uh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Go. Good, good, good. You weren't there last year? Yeah, I'm there every year. Um, but, you know, now that uh, I kind of know you guys, I know like, I could stop there. Every year I never get to everybody's the problem. And, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of good oh, things about you guys for, for a long time. So I'm really, oh, that's great. this has been a real. Yeah, it's been an interesting conversation, that's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah enjoy, Will, I'm enjoying this a lot. Will, yeah, did you have more questions for, for Willie? Like, we could go on all night, Willie. I, feel oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wealth of knowledge we have so, on the show all right, tonight. So, yeah, and I'm, I, I'm really liking Willie's thoughts on a lot of things, so I want to throw this one at him. 
you know, so, well, you, you know, you're a small cigar maker. You know, you're seeing what's happening with the FDA right now and, you know, some of the things that really could put the small or boutique market in danger. What are your thoughts and where do you think that's going? Well, they, they, they have been attacking us for quite a few years now, and it's, it's gotten more and more serious. It's escalated. Um, we never had a lobbying group until so CRA. We really didn't. I mean, the, the closest we had was the RTDA before it was called IPCPR. And, they, I mean, they can, they can only do so much. But CRA really has helped us. I think we are, you know, I wish I could tell you right now, listen, we're going to be fine. I, I it, it's it's I think 60 percent says that we'll be OK. You know, I, I'm hoping that this is the worst it gets what we see right now. But with this ban, they want to propose with the walking humidors, a ban. They want to control the, what goes in a cigar uh, regulate. You know, <laughs> we have to get rid of this administration. This is this never happened. until this administration came in, um, they're so anti cigar. I mean, the pro weed. But anti cigar, you can, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But we got a good lobbying group right now. It's the best we got. And I, I, I recommend everybody, please, I mean, if you can, sign up, become a CRA member. Because if you enjoy cigars, it, it, you don't know, I have no idea the, the help that it, it creates for the industry to keep it going and keep enjoying cigars and be able to go into a cigar shop and sit down and have a cigar there or lounge wherever you can go. Um, but I mean, other than that, I, I really think we just got to continue to fight support we get from a lot of the big manufacturers, you know, some of the retailers. And, I mean, we're doing good things as far as going to Congress. They're, you know, the, the CRA is actually doing a lot of good stuff with that, you know, talking to congressmen and everything. And there, there are a lot of people in the government that are supporting our cause. It's just, is there enough, you know? That's the key. You know, I mean, some of these things they're proposing are so frivolous, it's insane. A mm-hmm. blackout law, like they do in Canada. Um, <laughs> they want to regulate cigars, like like they do with cigarettes and flavored cigarettes. Like it, this is, you know, making a cigar is a work of art, like making wine. It's not. You don't tell the creator, the guy who blended. It's an art. You don't tell. Oh no, we want this in it. I mean, who's the government to tell us what goes in anything we consume? You know, someone said it isn't drugs or something. You know, well, last hour a cigar is not a drug. I mean, I know they want to they want to make it sound like that, but it's certainly not. You know? Yeah, and you could, uh, you know, you could die for your country, but in some places right. you're not old enough to buy a cigar. You know, I, I just yeah, find that amazing. Had, you know, you're right. Had, since New York City went to that, right? Have you found the some business came over to New Jersey? You know, since New New York's done things with taxes, the ages, everything they've done, outdoor smoking business has that helped you at all in New Jersey? Um, it it, it did for a while. Um, now New York lowered the uh, state tobacco tax, the same as Jersey now. So, but you know what? See, Manhattan is a different world. It, mm-hmm. it really is. It, I mean, yeah. you've got, a lot of these people, if it's there, it's convenient, they're going to buy it no matter what. They're not going to get in a car in yeah. New York where you can find parking to come to New Jersey to, to save some money, you know? Uh, if, if, what they'll do is they'll get, you know, go online if they're serious and buy a box or two online from a company, especially in PA, where there's no tobacco tax. And on weekends, we is when we saw a big influx here. People coming over the bridge, you know, hanging out, buying a lot of stuff, you know, because of the prices over there. But not on a regular, regular basis. Just like you know, once every couple of weeks, they come in and do that. But yeah, we you know we have our clientele. You know, we're in a good area here. A lot of high traffic area. It's, you know, very affluent area. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't really. You see a little bit of it, but now it's calmed down. Now it's the same. Cool. Uh, Will, did you have any more questions? Or All right. I think I'm good. I could probably go on all night, too. But yeah, I know. Good. <laughs> yeah, We're yeah. going to have to have you back, Willie. <laughs> no, I'd love to. I'd love to. It was a Folks in real New York. pleasure. Be sure. I could talk all night, yeah. too. About this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Willie, yeah. thank you so much for appearing on uh, the Stogie Geek Show. Um, we have five silly questions. Do you want to play five silly questions with the Stogie Geeks? Yeah, sure. All righty. Three words to <laughs> describe like- yourself. Oh, handsome, adorable, and bold. <laughs> if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? A lighter. <laughs> if, you you wrote a, if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Amazing. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? 
Oh boy. First. Choose two <laughs> celebrities to be your parents. Uh Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball. Nice. 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 Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Willie, again, thank you very much for coming on the Story Geek Show. It was awesome having you here. A wealth of knowledge about cigars and the cigar industry. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, same here. Yep. All the best, guys. Thank Willie, you for I'll see you at the show, yeah. Thanks, Willie. Yeah. All right. Look forward to it, guys. Thank you. Uh, take care. With that, All right. Bye-bye. we're going to take Bye-bye. a short break, come back, and talk about our stogies for the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. 